I'm excited to begin a journey with you today, a brand new teaching series about spiritual portals. I've been thinking about this for a couple of years, like these places in time that just absolutely change your life. What I want you to do to help me dive into this topic is to think about your life. Like think about your own journey. When you came to a moment and in that moment, everything else changed for you. Like some people call these defining moments. What were they for you? I mean, you know, some people say, well, it was the day I got my driver's license. Others of you would say it's the day my family took my driver's license away. It's the graduations in your life. It's the wedding day in your life. It's the day you landed a dream job, met your dream person. It's the day you had a child. It's the day you gave your heart and life to Jesus Christ. In those moments, what you feared What you believed, what you loved, what you wanted, everything changed in a moment. What were they for you? Like once you pass through that place, or to use the word we're going to all through this series, once you pass through that portal, there was no going back. There are places like this in the Christian life, and even if you aren't a follower of Jesus today, you will learn something about what it means to live for Jesus. We're going to start very basic, and then we're going to do a deep dive into the topic. I think the best place to start is to just define spiritual portals. Like, what is a spiritual portal? And if you have your note page, you can see it there. We'll bring it up on the screen here. Here it is. A moment in time that defines the rest of your existence, an opportunity to step through a passageway from the life you know to another plane of life that God has prepared for you. It's a passing experience. We're going to talk about that. Open for a moment right in front of you, but then the opportunity is gone. Look at the next slide. Everything I know about these portals assures me that if you step through, you'll never be the same again. A portal demands an intentional decision on your part. You'll never pass through one accidentally because the demands are too high. Today, we're going to talk about the spiritual portal of release, the word release. This is where we have to begin because every spiritual portal that you'll ever come to in your life requires a release, letting loose of those things you once held tightly so that you can embrace new things. It's a release of the grip that you had on past things so that you can take hold of future things. There's a story in the Bible that I think illustrates this so clearly. It's about a man, but it just as easily could be about a woman. It's obvious when we meet this person that he has been the pursuer all through his life of things that he wanted. And I mean that he's a man who gave chase. He is a man who pursued. He not only pursued, but he captured He hungered and thirsted for what he wanted. He went after what he wanted. And by the time he appears on the scene, this man possesses everything he's ever chased. Psychologists suggest that we all pursue, though we're not always aware that's what we're doing. Everyone is in a pursuit to fill a void or silence a voice. The perfectionist or the overachiever, they may not realize that their strain to make straight A's or the pursuit of a higher paying job or their desire to have more influence or power is actually a result of a voice that said, you aren't good enough. You'll never succeed. And everything they've done was trying to silence the voice. Or it's the voice that says, this is what is expected of you. We don't care what you want to do or how you're wired up. This is the expectation. And so they do that in an effort to silence the voice. The compulsive shopper may have no idea. That is one sign of depression. Compulsive shopping is often accompanied by a deep void of sadness. And so every time you get a notification that an Amazon package you know, showed up at your door and you get that little rush of adrenaline, it's a compensation more times than not. The person who's addicted to fitness and the person who's addicted to fentanyl share similar traits. They're filling and they're silencing. For the man in our story, his pursuit was money and power. If he had added sex to that, he would have had the trifecta, money, sex, and power. 
But he for sure had two out of the three. Here's what we're told about him. He was a certain ruler. And that means he had power in his day. He had influence in his day. He had high social standing in his day. We're also told this about him. He was very wealthy. So he had power and he had money. And then in a different account about his life, we're also told he still had his youth. Wouldn't that be nice? (laughs) He was the rich, young ruler. He's in the prime of his life. He had pursued and achieved leadership and influence. He had pursued and achieved a full bank account. But then this man that we're going to read about in just a minute came to a spiritual portal, a place where he's either going to pivot and life is forever going to change or he's going to stay put and the portal will close in front of him. Let's see what happens. A certain ruler asked Jesus, good teacher, What must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one's good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. Well, all these I've kept since I was a boy, he said. Now, Jesus was really going to get to it here. He said, you still lack one thing. Like, Jesus was just kind of probing, trying to expose, hoping this man would see his own problem, but he didn't. So Jesus had to point it out to him. You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor. How's that for a test? And then you'll have treasure in heaven. Then you're prepared. Now you can step through. Here's the portal. You can come and follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Let's dig into this. You are at a portal when you stand between the life you're living and the life you want. You can see that, can't you? In this young power broker, he basically had everything that we think we want. Power and influence. Lots of Instagram followers, social influencer, and spend money like there's no end to it. And yet, you can see this man acknowledging that something is missing in his life. He comes up to Jesus and he says, I don't know the way to eternal life. I don't know how to connect to eternal things. I don't know the way. I am missing something fundamental in my soul. And Jesus, can you help me find what I'm still missing? Now, this is curious in our culture. People would look at this guy and they say, okay, let's just go through his checklist. Bank account, it's filled. His schedule, filled. He didn't come to Jesus because he was bored. He didn't come to Jesus because he wasn't busy. He came to Jesus because the life he was living, though his schedule was full, his heart was empty. He made a living, but he didn't like his life. I wonder how many people in Southern California can relate to this guy. Outwardly, so many people have everything that so many others of us think we want. But inwardly, this guy confessed, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. A friend of mine posted this recently, and it's very sobering. A Tesla or Mercedes isn't a symbol of success if you drive to a job you don't like or home to a family that doesn't like you. This is when God brings you to a portal. See, we don't know just how, and we don't know just when this man first heard about Jesus. What we do know is that when he heard about Jesus, he made his way to Jesus. And there on a very dusty Middle Eastern street, caught between the life he lived and the life he wanted, Jesus asked him a question about eternal life. Now, a couple, you know, softball questions at the top. But then he hit the heart of this man. He exposed what really had a hold on this man. And it was all the stuff that he was holding too tightly. And Jesus said, one thing you lack, sell everything you have, Give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Would you allow me to paraphrase that? Let go of everything you have so that you can have everything you want. And boom, that's the portal. That moment. This is the portal of release. You remember our definition with these spiritual moments, these spiritual open doors, these spiritual decisions, you have the chance to step into the life, from the life you know, to a plane of spiritual existence you've never known. 
Here's the next part of this. I don't want you to miss this. You are at a portal when you are required to decide. See, this doesn't happen when you're just weighing your options. This doesn't happen when you say, well, I'll consider it, I'll ponder it, you know, maybe one day I'll put it off. There are times in your life when you come to a moment and you cannot escape the moment without making a decision. It's the now or never moments. It's the cut, bait, or fish moments. It's the get off the pot. I mean, you guys get, you get, the, you get the point. It's those moments you have to decide. Listen, your spiritual growth, your life with Jesus will have these moments that will call for more than the best of you. They will call for all of you. And those moments, when you have to decide, those are your portals. So Jesus said to this man who had full pockets but an incomplete heart, sell everything you have. Then Jesus said, follow me. It's the call that Jesus places on your life. It's the portals that he places in front of my life. Will you release what you have so that you can follow me? I mean, the real question that Jesus poses is this. Will you go all in? One time, Jesus was trying to show this about himself. He wanted his followers to see his own complete devotion to God, his own I'm all in to God. And so Jesus starts describing his upcoming crucifixion. If you want to see all in, Jesus explained to them, just watch what I'm going through in the coming days. But the disciples did everything they could to talk him out of that. And that's when Jesus knew They don't yet understand what it means to follow me. They don't yet understand the portal they must pass through to really be mine. They didn't understand the portal of release, where you let go of everything, where you're willing to surrender everything, where you open your hands to Jesus and say, all that I have and all that I am is yours. So Jesus wanted to explain this portal. He wanted to reveal this passageway to a higher spiritual plane. And look what he said to his followers. He called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple, look at this, must deny themselves, take up the cross, follow me. Whoever wants to save their life, they're going to lose it. But whoever loses their life for me, for the sake of the gospel, will save it. What good is it? For someone to gain the whole world, rich young ruler, yet forfeit their soul. What can anyone give in exchange for their soul? That's the essence of the song lyric that that we just had sung a few minutes ago. In the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Like you can have this whole world, but for my part, give me Jesus. And when I'm alone, give me Jesus. If you want the world, fine. But for me, when I'm alone, give me Jesus. And when I come to die, you can have this whole world. But when I come to die, give me Jesus. Jesus was standing right in front of this man. And he said, you ask me how to have eternal life. And Jesus said, it's me. Follow me. Release everything else. Let everything slide down your value system. Let all your other priorities diminish and follow me. I mean, I don't know how many of us can say right now that he matters most. That he is your highest love and your first devotion. That's the first portal. That's the decision that takes you to a higher plane of spiritual living. But I need to warn you, there are some hard facts about this portal. This idea of releasing everything and following Jesus with full devotion, you need to know there are some hard parts. Let me give you the first one, most won't. Most people are not going to do this. We kind of have this idea in North America that Christianity is kind of like something that's in the air. Maybe it's sort of like COVID. You don't quite know where it is, but you know, if you're around long enough, you're going to catch it. And we think, oh, I'll get a little bit of Jesus and I'll have a little bit of Christianity and I live in North America. So yeah, I'm kind of spiritual and I, you know, that, I've got a little of this Jesus thing in me. I caught it. But that's just not how it really works. I said this before. A spiritual portal won't just come to you. You will not fall into one 
accidentally. Look at this. A portal demands an intentional decision on your part. You will never pass through one accidentally because the demands are too high. And Jesus said, because the demands are so high, most people are not going to do this. Most people are not going to choose to pass through this portal of release. Jesus said it like this, enter through the narrow gate. For the gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. That's where most people go. Small is the gate, narrow is the road that leads to life. And say this last sentence with me, and only... Only a few find it. Now, don't miss this. Everybody's invited to this life with Jesus. The gate that Jesus talks about isn't locked. Anybody can walk through this portal. It's just the fact that most won't. Here's the other hard part of this. Half measures are not an option. Now, this one's pretty tough. We think, well, we'll just kind of half effort it. You know, I'll take convenient Christianity for 500, Alex. You know, when it works for me, I'm in. When it doesn't work for me, I don't want to do it. I'll just keep kind of one foot in the Jesus pool and one foot in on dry land. Can I just have one hand reaching for the Savior while the other hand clings to everything that really matters more to me? Because I just don't want to let that go. In the final book of our scriptures is a chronicle of visions that the best friend of Jesus had. His name was John. Now, John was all in. Like, John knew what it meant to be a follower of Jesus in a pagan culture. Because Christianity was outlawed, John was an outlaw. And because he preached Jesus as an outlaw, he was arrested and he was beaten and he was almost killed. And then his sentence was to be exiled to a remote island far from his family for the rest of his life, far from his friends for the rest of his life, away from everything he once held dear for the rest of his life. He's out on an island called Patmos, and there he's given this series of visions that we call the Revelation. Here's a man so devoted to Jesus, he released his need for safety, released his need for comfort, released his need to be close to friends and family. He knew nothing of convenient Christianity. He knew nothing of saying that you follow Jesus but he's sixth or seventh on your list of priorities. John lived a life of full release, and it cost him everything. It cost John everything. So in the Revelation, he sees Jesus evaluating different groups of people who said that they were followers of Jesus. And one of these groups lived in a city called Laodicea. And Jesus said to this group of people, I know what you do. I know that you're neither cold nor hot, and I wish you were cold or hot. So I'll spit you out of my mouth because you're only warm and you're not hot or cold. You say, I'm rich. I have many things. I need nothing. You do not know that you're in trouble and you need help. See, the hardest truth about this portal of release is that they're is no option for halfway. There is no option for halfway. Say it with me. There is no option for halfway. So we go back to our original story, this young adult, this CEO, this man who was rich, who came to Jesus knowing that he missed something eternal in his life. And Jesus just knew when he looked at him what was going to hold this man back. He knew unless this man is willing to release, he won't be able to follow me with an undivided heart. So Jesus said, let it go. Jesus said, you have to release everything if you want to follow me. And look what happened. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. I keep going back to our definition of spiritual portals, and every week during this series, we're going to read that definition of spiritual portals. And we need to remember this part, that a spiritual portal is a passing experience. It's open for a minute, just open for a moment right in front of you, but look at this, but then the opportunity is gone. This young man with his whole life in front of him, 
with the very Son of God right in front of him, with the way to eternal life right in front of him, with the portal open and shimmering with a new spiritual dimension right in front of him. He chose his busy schedule. He chose his full portfolio. He chose his other priorities. And right in front of him, you can just feel it in the story, the portal closed. Now I look at that, and my heart aches for everybody who put so much else in front of their relationship with Jesus. It aches when I hear people say, Why am I not getting help with my marriage? Why don't I have any guidance about my kids? Why can I not find peace in my troubles? And yet, when you look how they've stacked their life, Jesus isn't anywhere near the top, let alone being most and first in life. And I ask myself, why? And after reading this story over and over again this week, I finally saw it. Like the reason that this man walked away sad, the reason this man and so many others don't follow Jesus. It's tucked right into the question the man asked the Lord. Look at it. He said, what must I do to inherit what kind of life? Eternal life. There's the telling word. And herein, I think, lies the primary struggle. We live in a temporary world, or to quote that great theologian, Madonna, we live in a material world. Yet Jesus calls us to live with a perspective of eternity. Like, take your eyes off of the temporary. Don't live for the temporary. Live for that which lasts forever. But this man came to Jesus, and he possessed everything that temporary could offer. And only Jesus has the keys to eternal life, to life beyond the grave, to what the Scripture describes as everlasting. Look at these couple of verses. So we fix our eyes. This is where we focus. Not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is what? Say it. It's temporary. But what's unseen is what? I like the paraphrase of this next verse. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorb with things right in front of you. Look up. Be alert to what's going on around Christ. I mean, we are so temporary bound and so temporary passionate and so temporary focused. Think about everything that's temporary in your life that you give so much of your life and attention to. Your problems are temporary. Your house is temporary. Your health is temporary. Your job is temporary. Your money is temporary. Your ability, your life on earth, your success, your dating life, your company that you founded, it's all what? Temporary. Everything we tend to obsess about, almost everything that's high on the list of our priorities, everything we pursue is not going to last. And yet this man right in front of Jesus made a sad decision. And he chose everything that wouldn't last. And he walked away from everything that lasts forever. I mean, he did one thing right at the beginning. He learned that temporary things don't satisfy. He could feel feel it. He knew they didn't fulfill. He could feel it. He knew they didn't last. That's why he used the word eternal. That's why he came to Jesus with his question about eternity. Got that part right. He knew where the answer was in Jesus, but then he got the most important thing wrong. He chose temporary. And right in front of each of us is the question. If you were on that dusty Middle Eastern street that day, what would you have chosen? What's holding you back? What keeps you from giving your life and future to Jesus Completely, following him fully. See, today there's a spiritual portal open right now. Like, that's why you're here. That's why you're online right now. Right this moment, right in front of you, and on one side of the portal is Jesus. And he's saying, release everything that's in the way. Don't let everything that's temporary have such a hold 
on you. You think you're holding it. It's actually holding you. Release everything that ever held you back from following me. Fear of what other people think. Fear of how your priorities might change. Like what is holding you back? Jesus says release that and follow me. I know some people want to. They just don't know how to. So what I'm going to do today is lead you in a prayer of release. I'm going to give you the opportunity to pray so that you actually can step through this spiritual portal into a brand new plane of existence, a brand new life following Jesus Christ. Now, you have it printed on your sheet. It's also going to come up on the screens. And so I want you to say it out loud with me, and we're going to just say this prayer together. All right? Let's pray it. Dear Jesus, that whole out loud together thing, dear Jesus, I can see that my focus has been almost entirely on temporary things. These things have filled my time, my attention, my affections, and my heart. But today, I'm hungry for eternal life found in you. Forgive my sins, my efforts to have a halfway relationship with you. Forgive any attempts I've made to just fit you in or have a relationship with you based on my convenience. Right now, I want to release my hold of my pursuits and now pursue you. I invite your spirit to live inside me. From this day forward, for the rest of my life, I declare you my Lord and leader and I will follow you. Help me understand what this all means more and more. Amen. Now today, if you prayed that prayer, with an open and sincere heart, you actually just stepped through a portal. And life will never be the same again as you begin to follow Jesus. You've just started. A brand new dynamic, a brand new part of your relationship with Jesus that will continue to grow for the rest of your life. He becomes your best friend along this journey. He becomes your guide as you learn to trust him completely. He becomes your highest love as you understand his love for you. And then you feel safe obeying him and following where he leads. I'm excited by this series. And I actually hope you'll choose to not miss one of these messages. Because every weekend I'm teaching on this topic, there will be a brand new open door that will stand in front of you. And I'm going to ask you to consider stepping through each one of them. Let's pray. Father, thanks for the morning. Thanks for everybody here. Thanks for open hearts and open minds, and thank you, Father, for giving us chances, portals to move from the life we have to really, like this rich young ruler, he really wanted a life based on eternity, and we want that too. Help us make the better choice. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.